Casey Gray here, and you are watching another episode of The Conscious Builder Show. Every once in a while, we scan the internet, we look for questions, and we see what is happening out there and what is common questions that we tend to find in new construction, at least where we live here in Ottawa, Ontario, Canada. And one of the things that comes up often for builders, not so much in the stuff that we do because of the products that we're using, but one thing that comes up a lot in homes that are built uh, quickly and because of building code, uh, there's a requirement for vapor barrier on the inside of a basement wall. Uh, there's different ways and locations you can put a vapor barrier, but the most common way that most builders do it here where we live is you have a foundation wall and then inside of that foundation wall is you might have a frost wall, it might not even be a frost wall, it might just be an insulation blanket, um, but you have a frost wall, let's say that, and then in that frost wall you will have bat insulation and then the vapor barrier goes over top of that. What often happens in these situations in a new home is that moisture will build up on the inside of that six mil poly, which is the standard product that's used for vapor barrier in homes. And that moisture builds up because the concrete is curing. So it is something that happens often when it's new concrete. So concrete takes about 28 days to cure, and that's not even completely, but it takes longer to dry out completely. There is water in concrete and that water needs to get out of the concrete. And that, as a rule of thumb, uh, is about uh, a month, let's say, per inch. Uh, but it could be longer, right? It depends on the situation, depends on the climate and concrete and so forth. Um, but that moisture that's being released from the concrete has to go somewhere. And if it can't dry, drying to the outside might be fine, but drying to the inside, what will happen is that it will hit the inside of that vapor barrier. So one way to solve this, and, and we saw an image online and the builder recommended to cut it open and to let it dry out, that is actually a solution. Obviously you wanna make sure you wanna catch that moisture early enough so there's not any mold in there. You don't wanna open it up and there's mold without having a professional do it. Um, but if you catch it soon enough, you can cut it open, let it dry, and then close it back up. There is a downside to that though, is that in most cases, the vapor barrier and the air barrier are the same thing. A lot of builders, unfortunately, don't know the difference between a vapor barrier and an air barrier, but in most houses that are built around here, they are using the six mil poly as both. And when you cut a hole in the poly, that means you are cutting a hole in your vapor barrier, which is going to affect your comfort uh, and your uh, overall performance of your home. Um, now, obviously, uh, you won't be able to see this if you finish your basement right away in a brand new home. You could have this moisture issue on the back side and uh, your drywall could be over top of it and you have no idea until all of a sudden your basement start start smelling moldy, uh, mildewy and maybe you start to get a cough and you're getting sick more often and then all of a sudden you realize that you have something, <laughs> a bigger problem to deal with. So what I would recommend is a, a smart membrane. There are products out there that will allow vapor, if vapor pressure builds up, it will allow that vapor to actually dry beyond that. So it'll push it beyond the membrane. Uh, so there's a couple products out there. Uh, you can search the internet, just search smart membrane and it'll come up. And that would be a way to allow that, that wall assembly to dry both ways. And the reason why we are familiar with this is because of the types of homes that we build. And we have to put a lot of thought into what happens, not if water gets into a wall, but when water gets into a wall, because there is too much water, there's too much possibility for that to happen. So we wanna have insurance policies in place and using a smart membrane is a way to have that insurance policy in place. Uh, another way that we have done it is instead of using a complete wall of smart membrane because they can get quite pricey, is that you can actually cut a strip out. So say you have an eight foot wall uh, and you use the standard cheap six mil poly, you can cut out a strip in that middle of the wall and then put like a 12 inch strip over top of it, tape it up. Uh, in some cases, you won't necessarily have to tape it up if you're taking care of your air barrier somewhere else. Uh, we talk about that on other videos. Uh, we're not gonna get in the difference there. Um, but there, you can just put a strip of this smart membrane in the middle of your wall and that will allow your wall to be able to dry to the inside if it needs to. So this is common, uh, don't get afraid if this does happen, but we do recommend using the proper products and, and making sure that whoever you're working with understands building science 
and what can happen uh, because there's a good chance it can happen. That's why we want to put these policies in place. So thanks again for watching another episode here. If you haven't already, please hit subscribe. We have a lot of exciting projects coming up, including the three-day cottage, which is our first official YouTube series that we will be airing in the spring, but we are about to start recording. Actually, we already have recorded it, but uh, it's starting right now. Uh, so there's a lot of exciting projects coming out as well. I am co-authoring a book with Kevin Harrington, one of the sharks in the shark tank. So stay up to date for all of those updates.